subscribe to m code and ring the notification bell to get the latest content hello and welcome back this lecture is all about monitoring and debugging your spark application very effectively so it could be ready for your production deployment so here we are going to see some of the best practices that you can use for debugging your spark application as well as monitor it carefully to make it more optimized as well as less resource consumable so without further any ado let's get into it so we will start with debugging our spark applications so there are like several steps that you can follow to debug your spark applications with no time the first one is you have to enable the logging and adjust the log levels so basically there are many log levels that you can configure using one configuration in spark so those configurations are nothing but spark dot executor dot log level or the spark dot driver dot log level and you can set that log level to various stages according to the info that you want in your console or the logs of your output application so once you kick off your spark session and start your application then it will only generate those level of details of logs in in the output of your spark execution so basically if you want more information of your logs that where the application is submitted and all the steps and all the groundwork that it is doing in under the hood then you should then you should consider using the info which gives you all the info of your spark execution but if you want to only get the warnings that are getting in your spark execution then you can use the log level to the warn or if you only want to get the errors if to check if your certain operations got any errors then you can set up that log level to error so basically it will help you to debug your application effectively because let's be honest if you want to output some important information onto the console or save it as a log let's say as a load date of the execution as well as the counts of the data frames as well as to check if certain operation is successful or not so this series of tasks will not be much readable in if you have like thousands of rows of logs generated and you were not able to find it effectively inside those logs so due to which you will lose important information if you face any difficulties while running your spark execution so definitely you should consider either the warn level or the error level so that you only able to get the errors or the warnings of your spark execution and also get the output like the load dates the start time of the execution the end time of the execution as well as the important counts and the status of all the operations in your application so that is the first step of debugging your spark application then we have like you should use interactive development environments so you can use different environments like we are using jupiter lab in our in this course to develop our spark application we also have the spider id but many of us will choose pycharm id but some of them will directly use spark shell or the pyspark shell to interactively work with the spark and submit the code so basically this is also important for debugging your spark application because whatever the id you are more comfortable with you will able to debug your application more effectively and some of the ids will give you more features like it will highlight the errors like in the pycharm or vs code or any other id so those comes with predefined debugging features which will help which will make your life easier to debug your spark application then we have the leveraging the spark web ui so basically once you submit an application to the spark cluster you will get the link to the spark ui directly to monitor your execution so it will give you all the resources that are available as well as the memory consumption and the uptime and the execution time of the operation so basically you will able to optimize your application by seeing their their previous execution times as well as what is really happening and why your application is getting slowed down so you can debug all these things through spark's web ui then the next step is you have to start with the smaller data set first and not go into the gigabytes of data and also you can consider using the sample data to test your application and make some dry runs so that to get you the idea of how it will behave in the actual production environment 
and also since the processing the smaller data set will be more time efficient it will only take minutes to execute your spark application so to debug your application if you have any errors or any issues in the application it will be easier to debug that and it will not have to run the whole thing again and again to debug your issue then the next point is related to that only you should use the checkpoints so basically spark will give you the ability to save your progress of the job or the intermediate rdd onto the disk so that you can access it in the next execution if the job got failed so it will track where in which step the job got failed and it will continue after that in the next execution so basically this is nothing but the fault tolerance of the spark cluster so you can use this checkpoint directory to save your intermediate progress of the execution so that it will pick from the next time and it will be easier to debug your application because you are not going to run the whole process again and again if you have multiple steps in your sparks execution so that is going to be very helpful for debugging your application then we have like debugging locally before running on the cluster this is very important because you cannot deploy the code directly without testing it on your local machine so if you have data set or a smaller data set lying around you should test your application on top of your data set and check if you are getting the expected output and in the expected time because time is very important and also you should check how much resources it is consuming locally so that you will get an idea how much resources it will consume on your spark cluster when you are dealing with big data and your big data could be in petabytes so you have to make sure that it is it is behaving very efficiently on a local machine on a smaller data set so that it will behave the same way and not cause any issues and crash your spark cluster then we have you should validate the input data and the transformation this is very important so your data could be coming from multiple sources at and it could be in the multiple formats as well so you have to make sure that your data is clean and accurate and as per your requirements and if not if you are applying any transformation in the logic then you should be able to validate that if the data is getting into the right format in the output file so it is very important to maintain the integrity of your data within the system then you should also try capturing and handling the exception so exception handling is the very important step in building production ready application because let's say if you want to continue the execution if one step fails then you have to catch that exception in and it shouldn't stop the execution of the further steps of your spark application so to make sure that you have to add the exception exception handling in your code by using some simple methods like try clauses in python then you have debugging libraries and tools so there are like many tools present in python to able to debug your application very efficiently without your intervention so there is spark magic spark spy and there are so many other platforms or tools which a which will able to debug your application and validate the results for you so this is how you can debug your spark application very effectively so this was all about debugging the application let's talk about how to monitor the spark application very effectively okay so the first step of monitoring your spark application is nothing but collecting the statistics so for collecting the, all the information is very important for building certain dashboards so that you will able to get insights of your spark application and their execution history and what are the trends of its performance so basically you will be able to get all this using the spark web ui so in the spark web ui you will able to get the uptime of the application the task time as well as what is like the memory consumption of that application as well as its failure or success rate as well as the historic execution times of that application and the input gigabytes of that application so basically all the statistics will help you get more insights in your application and what are the trends and what you could expect in the upcoming future for that spark application then we have the key application metrics 
so basically you will able to get this and you can build dashboard so that your team can monitor your spark application so you will able to get how many applications are submitted on the cluster as well as their success rate and you can build the dashboard based on that as well as if you have deployed your spark application in aws or any other cloud platform you will able to get the billing details the cost of the execution and you can also leverage that to make sure that your application is is optimized or not and you can also able to debug your application using the using this metrics as well so these application metrics are also important and basically you will able to get those using spark web ui itself and you can pull those using kafka in real time to build interactive dashboards and also if you talk about the cost then as i told you that if your application is hosted in any cloud platform then you will able to get insights of the cost and billing which is provided by this cloud platform so aws if you are using aws then getting insights into the cost and get you will get to know what is the cost of your spark application which is running in the cluster because it's all about how much resources we are using in the cloud so that if you're application is not optimized it will be very impactful of your overall platform cost and if we talk about the metrics that describe some problem so there are metrics that you may be aware of like the wasted task time problem which gives you the wasted time of your spark application as well as the unused executor problem so if you're if you're having spark resources which are not, which are not used properly in your spark execution then that is also causing a problem then you have the spill problem so if you have face any disk spill of on your spark cluster as well as the skew problem so basically this metrics will give you information of how you can improve your application performance and monitor it effectively to able to optimize it further and also if you talk about the dashboards there are many approaches that you can use to build interactive dashboards so that you can team can easily debug your spark application as well as monitor it to make it more cost efficient as well as it should consume less resources across your spark cluster so these are some of the best practices of monitoring and debugging your spark application and you can able to easily implement them in your spark application so if you have any difficulties you can let me know in the comments and we can discuss it further so that's it for today i'll see you in the next lecture